Okay. Welcome back. It's good to be back. I was away, but now I'm back. Um, let's take a listen to what I have. Here we go. All right, so I think it's like 90% complete. Uh, I haven't listened to this in about a week. And, you know, the things that are jumping out to me are kind of the things that I was talking about last time. So I took some notes. So I think there's one or two too many of the sort of trumpet fanfare things at the end, too much anvil, and I need to go in and tweak the drum loops. So I think I'm going to go and start doing that right now. Um... Now, this is still, you know, the CPU is processing all the performance playback stuff. So it does drop a few samples here and there. Once this is all done and I get it stemmed out, it's going to sound really good. All right, well, let me dive in here. So now I'm going to concentrate. Probably won't be talking too much. Oh, and after I take care of all those, um, those little tweaks, and I think it's just time to start uh, making this sound musical, go into all the performances and program some more musicality in there. All right, so we're going to start from simple to tricky. Simplest thing is going to be just maybe making some less few uh, fewer percussion hits in the anvil. Let's let's check it out.
just took out a couple of those anvil strikes. All right, so then the next thing, let me delete that from my notes. And I think the next thing is going to be just to take a quick look at the trumpet fanfares at the end. There might be one or two too many da-da-da, da-da-da kind of things. Just that one that I, I muted, and I think I'm liking it, but I'm, I, there might be there might be one other spot. There's so many of these. Now everything's on top of itself and sort of in the middle because it's not mixed yet. I'm thinking that when I do mix, I'm going to have to do um, separate stems for each trumpet, probably for each brass instrument, and sort of position them so we have this uh, maybe like an antiphonal effect where you know, we've got a trumpet ensemble on one side and a trumpet ensemble on the other side. Uh, so they sound a little bit less on top of themselves. We'll be able to hear those sort of call and response fanfare blasts a lot more clearly. But right now everything's sort of centered. Yeah, just taking out that one trumpet I think was enough to clean it up enough. So I even have my note, one too many trumpet fanfare things. That's done. Uh, okay, a couple of things bugging me. There's the timpani roll at the end. The release on that timpani roll stinks. And I'm going to have to maybe find a different sample. Listen to this. so lousy there's no proper release on that I might have to find one that has sort of a timed out roll that actually has a the final hit on the timpani there let me see
I'm going to see if I can put another hit on there. I'm just sort of trying to paper over the fact that that timpani roll release is so pathetic and weird sounding. It's a bit better. If it's still bugging me after a few listens through, then I'm going to have to uh, do better. All right, now, uh, time to change the drum loops around a little bit. So what I had in there were just sort of placeholders. You know, it's probably like 50%, right? I don't know. Uh, I put those in there to get a sense of the energy and drive moving through the entire track. But then inevitably I have to go in and sort of customize the loops, make sure that they are working properly with the composition, right? So they're, they've done their job to help me compose now. I need to go in and see if I can get something that's going to be a little more synergistic, I think, with, with the composition. Let's see. By the way, uh, if any of you were watching the other stream, I was talking about putting a Zorna in at the beginning. I sort of changed my mind about that. It's this instrument. This instrument. <laughs> this thing. I don't know. Could be cool, but kind of feels too exotic for this composition. We have a hanging note in the cellos. Let me get this cleaned up. Sometimes that happens if you start and stop the playback and the, the system doesn't get the message to end that MIDI note. It doesn't get the... I just turned off my mic when I was talking. It doesn't get the MIDI off signal and so the note hangs.
So all I'm trying to do right here is just craft something that's going to give a little more push to the climactic point in the middle of this section. And I'm just tweaking through here. So I made it a little bit with uh, more forward movement, so I have to continue that. I think when I was working on this before and just sort of uh, roughing it out, I, I had a bit of a break in the, uh, the drum loop there, but we're getting some more forward movement, so I got to keep that going now. Well, that has a little bit more energy. I like how the, the sort of accent pattern in that is playing with and against the other metric stuff that's happening in the other instruments. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then I need to kind of craft a, an, a crescendo in the accent pattern and the dynamics, but I'm going to do that later when I go back and do that to everything because that is going to happen next after this. All right, so then we get a break in the drum loop and then it kind of starts again.
I think it was going to work here. I like the sort of continuousness, the continuous flow of the, how the drum loop is here. I'm going to break it up in some spots where the phrases start and stop with some um, like fills, right? Some kind of drum fills. There's kind of baked in uh, accent patterns and stuff that I think I could work with. So I think my idea here is to keep it simple to start and then gradually increase the complexity of the loop. Let's see how that works.
almost there. I thought it was going to be a little more complicated, but I think really what we, you know, the feature thing here is what's happening in the brass. I think that's the feature. This I thought there was going to be more to do with this, but hey, if it doesn't need to be done, it doesn't need to be done. So I'm just going to change the key switch here a little bit at the end. put in a few more drums there at the end just to give it some oomph. We're gonna listen through. I was thinking that might need more than that. Maybe there's a few opportunities here and there for a couple drum flourishes or something or other. Um, and then I think I'm gonna dive in and start tweaking the performances to really make them a lot more musical. Some spots it sounds very mechanical, very robotic. So that's gonna take some work. Um, and I kind of think we might need snare drum right at the end. Has a bit of a martial kind of vibe, military. So that might work. We'll see. I'm not, I don't know yet. It'll be an experiment. And I think once that's it, then it's time to start. Oh, and I need to put uh, some tempo changes in. But I think I'm going to do that like absolutely last before I stem everything out. Because uh, when there are tempo changes with a lot of programming and loops and the loops are tempo synced that makes the computer kind of freak out a little bit and then listening back to the playback is is really lousy so i do that right before i'm going to stem everything and get audio files to mix all right we'll listen to the whole thing see if there's any drum flourishes that need to be put in
Okay. One little tweak, and then I'm going to experiment with that uh, snare drum. And then I think it's time to start polishing these performances. This lead trombone player has a lot to do in this track. <laughs> Yeah, those tiny little tweaks I did to the little run-ups to the to that theme I was developing, ba bum bum ba. It's just too much of that. Just the little tiniest change I think keeps it fresh. Uh the low brass kind of hangs out on this one note too long. Maybe they're holding it just right and everyone else is holding it too short. Little snare drum, maybe. Could probably kind of copy the timpani, I think. Oh, wait. I think I have something better. Just trying to save myself some work. I think, let's see how it sounds. If I grab the triangle part and copy that into snare. Well, do it this way.
It's really a wimpy, wimpy sounding snare. sure if it's contributing much of anything. All right, the snare is doing a tiny bit, a tiny bit. I think if I mix that up, mix that up in the mix when it's time for that, that's going to be that's going to be effective. Just a, a little more percussion, color, and emphasis in there right at the end. Okay, save, and I'm going to try to dive in and do the dirty work of making this more musical. So I'm just going to go from the top top down so here's the top of the orchestra well actually let me take a quick listen to these woodwinds I kind of did some doublings in here real fast when I was working on this section and it might have been overkill Yeah, I think it sounds okay. I know there's a bit of there's an octave gap in here. I mean, it's filled in by so many other things and I think I'm using this woodwind octave sample anyway. So it sounds filled out this octave gap here. Normally if you were orchestrating, you'd probably want to fill that, but I think it's pretty much fleshed out the way it should be. It sounds it sounds right. All right, let's go in and uh work on these accent patterns. And then I'll humanize later. So I'm just trying to get the performance to be more musical. And then I'll go, it's, you know, everything's on the grid perfectly. 
which is impossible for, for people. Uh, so once I go in and I get sort of the accents and the dynamics all programmed in as best as I can, then I'll go in and humanize after. So the idea here is sort of make sure that every note leads to the next in a musical way. See, that's a really good example of where it sounds very mechanical. It's called machine gunning. Now, a lot of the samples, especially on staccato notes, they will alternate takes. So when they're recording the samples, uh, they'll record a bunch of different takes of the same pitch at the same dynamic level and the same articulation but because no player is ever going to play it precisely the same uh, two times in a row, they will alternate playback. So the, the computer is programmed to play take one, then play take two, then take three, then take four. So it doesn't have this sort of mechanical machine gunning quality to it. But this sample, I think, is just one, uh, is just one, one take. That's why everything sounds the same in this spot.
you know, there might not be too much I can do with this particular spot. It's really all loud. There's not much subtlety to it. It's really kind of balls to the wall. Um, this is the only woodwind sample that's there. I might just leave it. And yeah, I don't, I don't think tweaking this particular spot is going to make too much of a difference. I think it's just going to get buried. If there are any dynamic differences, they're just going to get buried under the, the full orchestra there. If when I go back and when I when I finish going through here and humanizing and putting in dynamics, if that spot is still annoyingly mechanical, then I'll I'll come back. But I, I think the the juice isn't worth the squeeze in that particular spot. All right, so I'm not using some of these regions here. It was stuff I was working on. I'm just kind of cleaning up. And we'll see what's next. I think choir, I'm going to go through and do that last. So we'll finish up any wins here. And then I think I'll head on to, I don't know, we'll just, just go through it. And I'll do choir last. All right, let's listen to the wins here. All right, let's just listen to upper winds. Upper winds. I didn't select these things properly. That little qu clarinet solo there at the beginning sounded good. All right, upper winds again. Yeah, all that, I think the thing that's uh, it's suffering from there is just so perfect, so perfect, too perfectly on the grid. So perhaps before I go in and try to tweak these accents, I think I'm going to actually humanize this section and get it a little less rigid, a little less rigid. And then after that, I can go in, uh, really bring out some of those accents and make it sound, sound cool. Thank you. 
Yeah, just going in and, and doing some really gentle randomization to the uh, the location of those sounded it sounded a lot better. Yeah, the, that humanization pass I did there, it really improved things a lot. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of pluck out some choice. There's already a lot of kind of random, you can see the uh, the note velocities down here. They're, you know, they're not, there's a good distribution of, of high and low, and I just want to bring out the accent pattern a touch. I realized I forgot to humanize the other stuff I had already worked on. Right. Now let's take a look at the lower winds here.
So I know the limitations are these samples. So again, it's always like you put a lot of you can put a whole lot of time into it. And at a certain point you get diminishing returns. So when I go to humanize, I'm just sort of looking to see how things line up to make sure it's not like it's a good performance, but not perfect. Looks like some of my bassoon here is rushing a tiny bit. So I'm going to go in after I'm done humanizing and tweaking this. I'm going to listen to the whole woodwind section. If anybody's a little bit too early or a little bit too late, then I can tweak those individual notes. So let's hear the whole, whole woodwind section. Everybody from the top. This little clarinet bit here, I didn't want it to be sticking out. Listen. In the background. the bassoon a touch, the bassoon lead, I guess that's about as much as he can do, too bad. I'm going to leave the uh, winds at that. 
and choir is next on the lineup, but I'm going to skip. All right, let's do brass. Let me hear just the trumpets. All right, this is where it's going to get a bit tedious. There's lots of brass. I find that with the brass, it's best to exaggerate as much as you can. And there's some things happening in there that I, I don't think I'm going to be able to perfect. Some of the releases, you know, just the limitations of working in the computer.
It's a bit tedious with this particular library. You can't adjust the accent or dynamic with the note velocities. You have to put them in with this modulation controller. The uh, note velocities control which articulation is played. So a little tedious. All right, so since some, some of these uh, brass parts are working together, then I'll be able to take the, the tiny little changes, the dynamics I've put in from one and kind of copy it into the other. And then when it gets randomized, when it gets humanized, um, they'll at least be doing the, uh, you know, the same dynamics or at least close to it. And here's something that I missed. So just because of the way these samples are, you know, I have like four trumpets, four solo trumpets. Um, and I guess this would be a mistake I made. So I have it arranged here and written here like it's actually different solo trumpet players. But of course, it's the same trumpet player <laughs> four times, right? And so here they are playing the same note, this E flat. Um, I wonder 
All right, so I have that same E flat happening three times, and it's going to sound phased. We're going to get comb filtering, right, because it's the exact same sample pretty much of the same guy playing the same instrument. So I'm going to have to get rid of one of these. All right, it's starting to get there. So I'm, I'm doing like a, kind of a rough pass. And then once I hear the entire ensemble playing, then I'm going to go back in and, and, you know, really listen critically to, you know, hear if, uh, what am I trying to say? Like when everybody's playing, we're not going to hear all the little flaws in the samples. But if there's something in there that really needs to be adjusted more, I'll be able to hear that and compare it um, to what you know what would be ideal, and go in and tweak some more. Right. So I'm doing a rough pass of everybody. Then I'm going to listen to the entire ensemble and see if there's any more room for you know squeezing as much musicianship out of this programming as possible. But we're not there yet. So if there's a note playing, I want it to do something, if possible.
I understand that some of these might be very subtle changes. Still a little too on the money in terms of the timing. Just gonna give it another round of humanization. Hear that spot right there, there's there's that comb filtering because it's the same guy playing the same note on the same trumpet on the same sample. I gotta see if I can make that a little bit different. It actually had, by accident, two uh, MIDI events over the same spot. That's why that was doing that. Starting to get there, fourth trumpet, and then we'll hear the whole trumpet section.
boy, is that tedious. Probably could use some more. All right, let's listen to the whole trumpet section now. It's going to sound real nice when it's all mixed and those parts are separated with the pan. Let's hear this last bit. I have a trumpet ensemble sample that I think I'm going to use for this very last, this very last um, chord here. All right, let's see how the uh, winds and trumpets are sounding here. I think it's getting there.
right, so in terms of musicality, the trumpets and the winds are better. I need to do a reality check here and make sure that my the things I'm programming in are actually happening because with so much going on, the CPU just ends up dropping samples, dropping samples in the playback. And I want to make sure that I hadn't that those are actually the CPU and not <laughs> programming mistakes. Like that stuff. Can you hear like stuff's cutting out? It's just the CPU. Super annoying. Good. In terms of programming, so what I did there with the trumpets, I think it helped a few percentage points in terms of believability. Then the last few points come in after it's all done, and I go in to mix everything. Um, but it's starting to inch its way there. So I got to sort of plow through the rest of these parts. So let me make a note that I finished up. I'm going to wrap things up right now. So finished humanizing at the trumpets. Okay, and then I'm going to continue doing the same tomorrow. I should have a little bit more time tomorrow. I'm going to have to go now. Um, but thanks for watching. And I'm going to post all, I post all of these uh, live streams onto YouTube after I'm done. Um, I have Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, 
Instagram. I got to still figure out what the heck to do on Instagram, but it's there. I'm trying to do this every day. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow at 1.30 Pacific time. And that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much.